everyone loves stories about game developers who hit it big with their very first game and go on to make millions of dollars. While that does happen, most of the time, developers see success only after a lot of hard work and plenty of luck. And few studios have worked as hard nor been as unlucky as Larian Studios. The Belgian developers spent nearly two decades toiling on underappreciated games before it hit big with Divinity Original Sin. Facing multiple near bankruptcies, a horrible publishing contract, and the perils of Kickstarter, Lyrian has emerged as arguably one of the greatest RPG developers of all time. Today on Game Files, we're going to look at the history of Larian Studios, and it all starts in 1996. Founded that year, Larian's first project was the RPG The Lady, the Mage, and the Knight. If you've never heard of it, that's because it was cancelled in 1999. Publishers were interested in it, but they kept demanding technological changes that cost money they did not want to spend. When the game was finally abandoned, Larian was penniless. Fortunately, Larian got by thanks to the sales of its second project, LED Wars, a real-time strategy game that kept the studio's lights on. They also made over 20 work-for-hire games, such as casino games, that were mindless but helped prevent bankruptcy. Fortunately, keeping the lights on paid off. Lyrian's work on The Lady, The Mage, and The Knight attracted the attention of publisher CDV Software, who wanted the studio to develop a new RPG. This resulted in two things, the first Divinity game and the signing of an awful contract that almost killed Larian. Divine Divinity was the first RPG developed by the studio. Apart from the awful title, Divine Divinity is notable because of how it was released. Namely, Larian didn't know the game was being released. CDV had launched the game without approval from the developers, and it had over 7,000 bugs at that point. It gets worse. Despite the bugs, Divine Divinity reviewed well and sold well, but it didn't sell enough. See, Larian had signed a contract with CDV that said that the studio would only receive revenue if the game sold several million copies. It didn't, meaning Larian earned nothing. Larian responded by letting go of most of its employees. Those that stayed worked on educational games such as Ketnet Kick which was enough to keep the studio going for another couple of years. The money spent was used to make a new Divinity game. Divinity 2, Ego Draconis, was an action role-playing game that used Bethesda's engine, and developers poured their hearts into it. But publishers were anxious and rushed the game for release at the height of the 2009 financial crisis. Divinity 2 was good, but once again, it didn't sell well enough for either Larian or the publishers, the latter of whom went bankrupt. Yet Larian survived, and this time, it didn't have to scale back significantly. In 2010, Larian released a director's cut of Divinity 2 that stabilized the company's finances. This allowed the studio to work on two games, the strategy game Divinity Dragon Commander and the RPG Divinity Original Sin. Yet the focus was clearly on the latter of the two. According to developers, Original Sin was going to be Larian's last hurrah. If it failed, the studio would cease to exist. Profits from Dragon Commander were used to finance it, and a successful Kickstarter campaign also provided some funds. But it wasn't enough. Lyrian had to delay tax payments to finish it off. But when Original Sin launched in 2014, Lyrian's future was finally secured. Within three months, Original Sin sold half a million copies and became the fastest selling game in Lyrian's history. Players and critics loved the game's deep combat, rewarding narrative, and focus on co-op. For the first time ever, Larian had finally found its footing. Divinity Original Sin 2 expanded on much of what made its predecessor successful, further expanding its combat system and interactivity. A successful Kickstarter campaign propelled development, and in 2017, the Original Sin 2 launched. It was quickly hailed as one of the greatest role-playing games of all time. It's filled with impactful choices that let players tackle problems in creative ways. For the first time in years, Larian isn't working on Divinity. Instead, it's tackling the sequel to one of the biggest RPG franchises ever, Baldur's Gate 3. Having finally escaped its financial troubles, Larian's future is bright. It controls its own destiny, 
meaning it can finally accomplish what it set out to do decades ago, make RPGs that are unlike anything you've played before.